Okay, I'm going to read some paragraphs from this book. And I'm sorry because I'm in bed. I've been really sick. But I want to read this and post it up. <clears throat> Tomorrow has made it very clear that the Contras were eager recipients of such tutelage. I have been very close to the Contra side, he recalls. I am saying that our atrocities toward prisoners or toward civilians were routine. I mean, it was a matter of intimidating people or using practices of terrorizing the country so people will fear you and will eventually support you out of fear. They were approving, condoning the practical use of terror. The targets were people working for Sandinista government agencies, like cooperatives, or people who belonged to health clinics, or people who were teachers or bank employees. Very often, their ambushes are for people who are civilians, who are working on roads or perhaps on the harvest. They will attack anything that moves, you know, an area near a combat zone, women or children or adults. Such methods, according to Chamorro, were in entirely consistent with their training. Training by the U.S. and CIA heavily involved. This is my note where you see my face. I'm going back to the book now. They were trained to kill communists, and this is an important thing, because they might react in a situation where the only good communists are dead communists. So they will kill people who they don't have to kill women and children. Sometimes terror is very productive. This is the policy. Keep putting pressure until people cry uncle. To complement the manual, the CIA trainers had given the Contra troops something else. When Chamorro went to the FDN, he found that among the things the CIA used to give us was a big knife. It's called a commando knife. And our people... Everyone wanted to have a knife like that, to kill people, to cut their throats. What is very sad in this kind of war is that sadistic tendencies don't diminish. They become stronger. People who are sadistic become more sadistic and more brutal and more cruel. One could see living evidence of this process in remote regions of Nicaragua, such as Sayuna and Paiwaz, in early 1985, as well as the numerous reports of straightforward killings. There were an alarming number of cases of mutilation. It was particularly painful to hear from two sets of children whose parents had been killed in counterattacks in different regions that the victims' faces had been peeled off, in one case a mother, the other a father. Despite repeated claims to the contrary in Washington and elsewhere, it appeared that not all the Contra rank and file were willing volunteers. Our commandantes have used force to make young people join us on a large scale, even threatened to kill them if they would not follow, Chamorro explained in an interview. These people later on became soldiers. Some desert, but many of them stay fighting. They are scared to leave, or they have nothing else to do, or this gives them status. The Contra commanders routinely brutalized their own recruits, willing or otherwise, a fact that, according to Chamorro, was of much more concern to the CIA trainers than what was being done to children and other representatives of the, quote, enemy, unquote. Discipline was routinely enforced, Chamorro added, by keeping people without food or tying them to trees, or raping female recruits with the help of the famous commando knife. The CIA, says Chamorro, was fully informed. In 1983, 1984, they knew everything. They were monitoring all actions. They were exposed to all atrocities, abuses. I talked to the CIA, the station chief, to the deputies, of what I knew, and also to Mr. Kilpatrick, the person who helped us with the manual. He got very furious 
when he saw the actions of our commanders against our own troops. But I never heard him complaining about abuses committed against the enemy. The FDN's military commander, former National Guard Colonel Enrique Bermudez, always emphatically designed that, denied that the Contras committed atrocities against civilians or used kidnapping as a recruitment method. He was rarely pressed on such unpleasant questions, but in a May 1985 interview, he did admit that there might be, quote, isolated, unquote, cases of rape, mutilation, and kidnappings. He conceded that no one had been disciplined for such behavior. To anyone prepared to travel the back roads of Nicaragua, however, the evidence of bereaved and scarred victims, not to mention escaped kidnappees, was all too easy to find. The Contras were left in no doubt that their actions had the backing of the United States. As Chamorro recalls, we talked only to high people in the CIA, and those people used to say that the White House knew very well what was going on. The person who was in charge of the FDN, of the project as they call it, Dwayne Claridge, used to tell us that they were briefing the President of the United States once a week. Indeed, as it was possible to discover in Tegucigalpa in the spring of 1985, the chilling truths about Contra atrocities and recruitment methods were well known not only in the CIA, but the rest of the burgeoning bureaucracy of the Contra War. So I've read a lot of history like this, and this is horrifying and terrible and unjust, and the U.S. does this all over the globe. If you don't know about this, I hope you will maybe pick up a book that I recommend and learn for yourself. More of us need to know this, and more of us need to share this information so that more people in the U.S. can understand what it takes to keep this system running.